Now, when I was doing uh, the sports bar for a long, long time, um, Richard Riakpour was a, a guest on the show quite often, and we sort of adopted him, and he adopted the name The Midnight Train. That's Richard Riakpour's nickname, The Midnight Train. I'd like to think Drive Time now, our show, Bentley, have adopted our next guest. He's a heavyweight boxer. Boxer. He's going to be heavyweight champion of the world soon. He fought the weekend and won. Um, it only took him two minutes, three seconds, but it was a great performance. Let's find out more from him as we say hello and good evening to Johnny Fisher. Hello, Johnny. Hello, Andy. Good evening. Hello, Darren. Hello, Johnny. Talk. You're right, boss. Yeah, all good. All good. Great result of the weekend. Happy with the performance and looking forward to rolling on. Johnny, we love you, by the way. I just wanted to get that out there. Right? It's good. I'm, your adopted son. I'm your adopted drive time son, as you said. Oh, is that official? Can we adopt you official. now? That's an official bash. Oh, wow. Okay, that makes us very <laughs> excited. When you, when you become heavyweight champion of the world and we phone you up, you can't like, you know, oh, I'm busy, I can't do it, lads. You've got to come straight on. Well, no, of course not. If I ever get there, you you boys will be right behind me, so right. it's not a problem. I don't, want to, I don't want to turn my radio on and hear Jim White speaking to you. <laughs> no. Get me out. Say Andy. And Andy and Darren. Good, good, okay. Uh, listen, um, before we, we talk about your fight, let's talk about you climbing into the ring because, I mean, the, the noise in that arena was just deafening. It looked like that from where I was watching it on the box. You looked like you were calm and collected and also you looked like you were having a lot of fun. How were you feeling when you walked into the ring? Yeah, I'll think back to the first couple of times I've done it, the O2 and Ali Pally. It's all new, new experience. So you're a bit stiffer, you're a little bit more tense, but I feel, well, I've done it about four or five times now. I'm getting a bit more used to it. And as you said, I'm enjoying that ring walk. I'm enjoying soaking it all up. And the way I dealt with that is thinking, I'm very lucky to be in the position I'm in. A lot of boxers don't get that support so early on in their career. And why not enjoy it? Because when I do stop boxing in 10, 15 years' time, I look back at these moments and wish I did enjoy them a bit more. So I'm very grateful for the support I get. And I'm trying to soak it all up while it's all there. Talk to me about the fight then, Johnny. I mean, what a punch that was. And what did you make of your performance? Yeah, um, Dominic Musil has been, been uh, a few rounds with some good prospects coming up. Um, only been stopped twice before that in his 12 or 13 fights. So, yeah, I'm happy with the performance. I was expecting going into it. I was talking to my manager before and I was thinking, if this goes to points but I box well, I'll be happy with that. But I sort of not surprised myself, but I was surprised at how quickly I managed to make him feel that power and I got the result that I wanted. And if someone is hurt in front of me. I've got good instincts to get him out of there. I'm, I'm very uh, confident in my finishing ability, so I showed that again on Saturday. Johnny, you know when you're in a boxing match like you were at the weekend and you first connect with them, can you tell right away whether they fancy it or not? Uh, I think it's more about whether they can hold up to the power. I think they all fancy it because they're all big, they're strong, they're proud. Dominic Musio in the build-up, I can tell more from the weigh-in and from the press conference, how they conduct themselves, how they look at me at the weigh-in. And Dominic, I didn't see any... Uh, any sort of lack of confidence in him, lack of belief. But it all changes when you hit them for the first time, as you said, and you land that first blow and how they can stand up to that power, even if they are an 18, 18 and a half stone man like that bloke. Once they feel that power, not many people can take it. I, I can't remember which boxer coined the phrase, but I think the phrase is everyone's got a game plan until they get punched in the face. Mike Tyson. Is it yeah. Mike Tyson? Okay. Um, listen, you mentioned your finishing ability. Something I really loved when I was watching you was when you caught him, you literally sprinted over to him to try and finish the job off. So many times I've seen boxers be a little bit too precautious and, you know, they catch him and then they sit back and then they move and try and finish it slowly. But you really went for it. Is that part of your game plan or is that just instinct? Yeah, it is instinctive and it is part of the game plan as well. But one thing that my fans like tuning into, I'm not the most polished, I know that. I know I've got a long way to go. I'm still probably a novice in this sport in the professional game. But one thing my fans are always guarantee when they come and watch is that I'll be, I will be violent. I'll be aggressive. I'll be rough and tough. And people love watching that. People have watched people fight for hundreds, for, cent for centuries, for thousands of years. And I think that's one thing I bring to the table. Excitement, raw aggression. And people love tuning in to watch that. And that's why I'm doing two or 3,000 tickets every time I fight. So, so when next um, can we see you in the ring then, Johnny? What, what's next for, for you after this fight at the weekend? Well, I definitely want to uh, fight again this year. Uh, there's a great show in Leeds with Josh Warren tonight. Ebony Bridges is on it as well. Um, it's great when we travel up north to fight. I've done it in Sheffield not long ago in August. Um, it'd be great to... I've got a lot of support up there and it's good to, to fight all over the country and try and broaden that support. And who, who wouldn't want to fight in a great city like Leeds? Mm. Sometimes when I look at sports people... I try and find something that I can connect with them. And, and then it makes me think, oh, I'm a bit like them. And I thought that with you, actually, on Saturday night, when I saw you ordering a Chinese takeaway afterwards. 
Oh, well, I, had, I had a Chinese Saturday night. I had a Chinese Sunday night with my nans as well. Oh, you're, uh, wow! Okay. <laughs> but you you had you had or you shared the Chinese table with your opponent. Is that right? Yeah, I do that after every fight. Now, like one of my good friends, Jake, who does uh, who works with me as well, he said, "Why not share a chicken ball afterwards with your opponent as a as a show of respect? Win, lose, or draw, share a sweet and sour chicken ball." Done it with Eddie Hall as well. He came and watched the world's strongest man from 2017. Unbelievable that he came and supported me. And I think everyone loves a chicken ball. So win, lose, or draw, share one afterwards. Do you think that will be, remain throughout the levels that you keep going up? Do you think that will stay? <laughs> oh, definitely. Definitely. It's not going to change. Chicken ball after the fight, win, lose or draw. It makes everything a little bit nicer for everyone involved. You can't change that. <laughs> uh, listen, Johnny, just going back to your victory, <coughs> excuse me, in, in only two minutes, I, well, I can't remember who. I think it was Anthony Joshua. He had a fight I watched. <coughs> excuse me. You're right. And I've got a little bit of biscuit in my throat, I think. And um, I've got a, a chicken ball. <clears throat> and he, he, he won. Excuse me. He won the fight quite quickly, a bit like yourself. And then the camera, the camera cut to him, and he was backstage, just like sparring, like shadow boxing. And the reason he was talking about it is he said he needed to have like a warm down. When you've trained so much for a fight and it's over so quickly, what do, does that does that mean anything to you, or or do you have to warm down, or you just get on with the day as if you would have taken him five rounds? Yeah, I've seen a lot of few boxers do that. For me, it's not something I. I, I personally do. But for me, it's not so much the physical side of it that you've got to warm down. What you've got to do is have a week off after a fight to mentally deload. I know it's just the Andy uh, over there. But, um, yeah, you've got to mentally deload after you've, had, after you've had a fight. So now I have a few days off. I'll eat what I want. I've had about four Chinese's already. I'll, I'll go and have a bit of chocolate. I'll have... Uh, I've been having cookie dough, and fudge, coat, fudge, fudge brownies and everything. That's what it's about for me. Deloading mentally after a fight is just as important as physically uh, having a break as well. Johnny, have you had four Chinese's? It's only Tuesday. <laughs> the fight was on Saturday. Uh, well, what it was, I ordered it on Saturday night and I picked it up with my mum and then I left the menu in the car the next day and I saw it and I was leaving at lunchtime and I thought, oh, that crispy beef sounds nice. Oh, and, wow, that I, does. I just thought, I've got to have it again. And I rung my nan up and said, nan, can I bring some Chinese round? And then the problem is, I ordered the Chinese, and I thought I'd have it all to myself. And then somehow, my mum found out, my dad found out, my sister found out, my brother found out. So 20 minutes later, they're all tucking into my Chinese as well. And I thought it was a bit of liberty, really. I hope that never changes. <laughs> I hope that never changes. You can't um, get away from Big John. If there's Chinese around, Big John's going to find it as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he would with a big fat Bosch. Um, listen, you uh, you mentioned the strong man Eddie Eddie Hall. He's been uh, he's fought recently actually in the ring. We've seen Tommy Fury calling out KSI Jake Paul, of course, again after Jake won at the weekend. Would you ever fight a uh, a YouTuber, an influencer? This is not aimed at me, by the way, but would you ever fight one of those people? Well, I was talking about this actually uh, during fight week. There seems to be this this new, obviously, this new wave of YouTube influence of boxing, and there's like this crossover between that and then like the traditional side of boxing. Boxers coming through, and I think a lot of boxers from the traditional side of it can take a lot of uh, qualities away from the uh, from these influencers and f see what they do, how they build their followings, how they've got great support. And that's, I think, how we've got to create, create this, this buzz around traditional boxing again because boxing is not just about your skills. That's the most important thing. Of course it is. But people buy into personalities as well. And I think that's why this success of, of, of these YouTube fighters, these influencers has been doing so well. But we want to keep the quality high as well. And that's why it's important that we, we, we encourage these boxers to build, to build their fan bases, build their followings. And I think that's something I've been able to do quite well. And that's a testament to the people that support me. They're very genuine people from where I live, from my university. They come out and support me week in, week out, whenever I'm fighting. So great to have them on board. And why not? If the, if the, uh, if the, the support was there and people wanted to see it, I'd, I'd, I'd fight one of these influencers. So you would? You would? If your next fight was up against Jake Paul and you, you were going to pocket £3 million, course, you'd do it? Easy money for Johnny. Of course I, I would. I know, but the reason I ask that is because I just wonder if, if the boxing purist frowns upon a fight like that. Well, I look at a lot of my fans aren't boxing purists, uh, uh, first and foremost, the supporters. They're people, I've brought a lot of people into boxing who wouldn't necessarily watch it, more like a rugby background or they went to my university and I never really experienced boxing before. So I wouldn't say I've got a traditional background of, of supporters and, follow, and a following myself. Okay. But whenever I go out, people are always asking, please fight Jay Paul, do this, do that. But listen, I know I've not got the following nowhere near as big as him, but there is an interest there and they have brought new eyes into the sport as well. So mm -hmm. 
can't knock it completely. And there's things I don't like about it, but there's a lot of good things that us regular boxers can take away from it as well. Mm.